Hey guys, so I'm finally home. Um, none. I'm home from taking my mom to get her EEG done today. I was starting to question if it was even going to get done, um, but it did. We're going to find out if, and we're pretty sure these are seizures, um, what kind, if we're going to get this diagnosis going so we can call our insurance and see what's covered and how we can, we can put up preventative measures against, like, for safety, you know, um, alerts, you know, different places, what's covered, what's not, all that good stuff, um, seeing about the treatment plan because it's been given her anxiety. She's doing a lot better. Her memory is better for, for the most part. Um, she's more like my mom. She looks more like my mom. She's ate, made herself eat for a month now. Um, trying to remember everything. I'm kind of using this to document, but today we did get into it. Um, I was trying to keep myself calm, and I was so nervous about today because I, if, regardless of what's going on, I don't want to respond in that way because God has truly changed me. I just have to put it to the test by going out and putting it in action, okay? I've been seeing a lot of people say that, you know, like, we love through action and not through word. Be careful. We do love through word. The word of God. God didn't use words so that we could say that they are not how we love, but it shouldn't be how we show our love alone. Okay? Because, remember, loving kindness is also correction. Loving your child is correcting them. So, the word of God isn't just correction. It's love. It's all coming from this place of love because it's all Jesus. So, what we want to show the world, and so we do so through action. We soften hearts so that we can correct them. God doesn't have tough love. Holy Spirit, have it. God doesn't have tough love. Sorry, but he doesn't. Tough love is lack of accountability. It's lack of empathy and it's lack of understanding and of knowing how to handle a situation. You just don't know what to do anymore. Or you haven't even tried. There's two different spectrums for this, but my point is that I needed to learn and I needed to practice what I know has changed in me and believe in the power of God and what he has changed in me. And I've seen that a little bit today and that's nice and it's not glorifying me. Glory is to God. But I did still fall short of him and and wow this car's heating again. I got to shut it off. I got a card. But, um, so, I don't want to get distracted. Um, can you tell I'm struggling to drive? So, so, I had to put it in action. So, not only does she have pseudodementia and possibly seizures, She's going through menopause, can't have hormone replacement therapy. Um, she has like a very short term memory. More so long term, kind of. It, it's a hit and a miss. It's really, you can't like categorize it. So, her understanding and her perception of things is off. She is paranoid and she is assuming a lot of things and she's very angry. Understandably. Um, I'm not saying that she is delusional. That's what she thought I was saying today. And she thought I was saying that maybe she thought that what she thought was happening didn't happen because of her seizures. And that's not. And what I was trying to consider with her after she spoke with me, I didn't want to interrupt her because she deserves an outlet too. But I wanted to be able to, when things, when she calmed down, I was like, yeah, and I listened to her. I should have been a little bit more understanding and actually listening to hear. But I was like, 
Mom, can we consider what if, what if this isn't what's really happening? Because the enemy can be really good at making it look like things, or we can scan our environment and find what we're looking for. It doesn't always mean that is the reality. Our perception is does not always match up with the truth. So, alternate realities. It's not always delusional. And it doesn't usually start off as a full-blown lie. I thought she was being manipulative for a long time. I think her perception is wrong. I think she doesn't know that every thought in her head isn't always our own thoughts. And, and we don't have to accept them as that. And just because A and B looks like it makes D, we know it makes C. And we need to find A and B to be able to make C. But when it looks like it is, and you're convinced, and going against what you've already said you think happened, actually kind of makes you the enemy in this picture. It's really hard to get past that. And I don't know how. I had to learn. I had to, the Holy Spirit had to slow me down and stop trying to get through to her in this mind state. And I'm like, what? I don't know how to get through to her. And I'm like, Mom, why are you getting so mad? I'm just trying to talk to you. I'm not saying this is what happened, but you're putting something big on someone. And that, that's a lot for someone to carry. And you're expecting them to not respond or react. They're going to. And I was like, but I couldn't get it out. But I get it, because I can do the same thing. And, and I get it. I said, you're... She kept saying, hun, and I'm like, mom, quit calling me hun. You are doing it in a way, I'm going to cuss, and I'm sorry. I know no, I'm going to say, you know what I'm talking about. So, you're doing it in a way where you're intentionally being a B to me when you say that. I wasn't saying she was a B, but it, that's not what she heard. And I get it, I shouldn't have said it. Or I should have found a better way to say it. But I wanted to address the fact that, Mom, I'm aware that when you're doing this, you're saying it in a sarcastic way. And you're condescending towards me. And you're making it seem like I'm feeling like you think I'm dumb. When you're saying, hun, and you're interrupting me, it blew up. But the next thing I know, I look over and I see something moving. On. She's on the upstairs patio, like... And there was, um, a, um, um, there was a pregnant squirrel outside. And I'm like, oh my gosh. We were yelling at each other. Well, honestly, I can honestly say I wasn't yelling. I did get loud sometimes. But she was, and it's understandable, okay? She's been through a lot. And she's she doesn't understand what's going on, you know? And, and I don't either, so I can't fully say. I'm not saying she's delusional, like I said. I think that she's confused. And I think that she doesn't understand technology. So to her, what she sees going on is like she doesn't understand the behind the scenes. And what it takes to, like, do all of that. But... If you have older parents, or just, like, know of someone that doesn't understand technology, they think that, like, everybody is hacking them. And then with the dimension, and I'm not saying she's wrong. I'm not saying this is absolutely insane. And this is not, I've seen where people are, like, maybe this is, um, schizophrenia. And the problem with that is, like, no, it's not. It's not. She's stuck. She's stuck where she was, and she's mad. And she's trying to find an explanation for all of it and someone to blame. She said she prayed for God. She prayed to God that night and said, God, I need you to take over my life. Take control of my life. And she said she felt the most peace she had felt during these ongoing seizures she was having. When I found her, she was like hard. Her eyes were open and not moving and I was screaming and like hitting her ribs and like, like I thought she was dead. Like, oh. and 
she eventually, her eyes finally started to move after like a minute or so of me doing this. And she came to, she never spoke. She just like was not there, but her eyes was like not my mom. She wasn't for a while. She was so angry. And you know, we all struggle with things. But the scripture that keeps coming to my mind is in Job. Have you considered my servant Job? He's righteous. Have you considered my servant Job? That was God saying that to Satan, the Satan, in heaven, in the heavenlies, like the council. The divine council meeting up. He was able to go up there. And he said, where have you been? Oh, you know, going to and fro. Seeking anyone who, well, I can devour, basically. But have you considered my servant Job, who is righteous? He used to make sacrifices to God when his, because his kids every weekend would meet up and drink wine, and then afterwards he would go and make a sacrifice and ato of atonement to the Lord for them. But what we don't know, mm, I don't know. I need to do more research. So all I have to say is, have you considered my servant? He lost it all. He got repaid. It doesn't say that it wasn't the same children or the same livestock that we had before. I assume it wasn't. So I'm like, sort of repaid. But I'm like, does it? It also doesn't say if it was on earth or in heaven. So we will do greater things than these. On earth or in heaven, I don't know. But what does your narrative sound like when you talk to God? In the car, when you're leaving somewhere? Bad day, good day? And you're in your head. You're not speaking it out loud. How do you address God? Are you? Do you come at him like in a formal manner? Are you like, dear heavenly father? In your head? Or are you like, what up? Or you just like start talking? I feel like sometimes I just start talking and I'm like, you know, I don't really know. And then I'm like, am I talking to God if I don't address him formally? Am I doing him a, like, am I being rude, I guess? Like, I don't, does he know I'm speaking to him? You know, I think he does. I'm like, is there times where we think we're talking to him and we're not? I don't know. So, I kind of got far from that but one thing I want to do to a poem or something is oh I want to do a hula hoop video and in the background instead of music I want it to be a constant playing of the, these muffled voices that sound like it's in the head of these people and but I want it to be them actually speaking what it sounds like like sending in videos of just the audio of or the the visual too is fine of you talking to God but don't just go and record yourself like hey God what's up wait until you catch yourself doing it in the car and then just start recording it and send it to me that would mean a lot to me that could be so impactful I want to hear people's narratives with the Lord. I want to know what they sound like. I want to hear the faith. I want to hear that emotion. I want to hear that many people speaking to our Lord. I want to hear them praise Him in their car, in their head, when no one's with them. And they think nobody can hear me. But I can't be a creep. So you're going to have to send it. But don't just send it to be like, oh, this is what I would say. Wait until you catch yourself doing it and then be like, mm. wait until you just stop driving for driving. So, but, um, have you considered my servant Job? 
Today my mom said, I divided over my miscarriage. I didn't understand it. I was like, I have a void. I'm so empty inside when I touch my stomach. I felt her there. She was gone. My mom said, God chose you to birth an angel down here. I don't know why, and you might not know why here on earth. But God chose you to birth an angel. And I'm like, you know, I don't know. They say it's not my fault, even after they know what I did. Even the doctor told me. So I'm not just saying this. But through my addiction, I didn't fully quit smoking cigarettes. And I did smoke meth a few times. Then I quit. But it bears on my conscience every day. It makes me doubt everything. And today when she said that, I was like, how can you say that? But at the same time, something in it rings so true. And the enemy tried to stop it. I don't know. I know. I don't think it was in his will for this to happen. But I think he took what the enemy meant for good and he will and is turning it for evil. He, what the enemy meant for evil and God is turning it for the good for those who worship and love the Lord. So, I believe it more today than I did yesterday. I still have doubt. And I'm asking God to help my unbelief and my distrust in Him. And to help my conscience. And to know that He wipes it clean and He remembers it not. So, if you're struggling today, or if your mom's struggling today, have you considered my servant Job? I'm saying that to you today. If you haven't, it's a rare book for people to preach on. So instead of watching a preacher preach about it, open up a Bible, a real life Bible, and read it for yourself from chapter 1 on verse 1. Okay? It's hard. But sit in that uncomfortability. Ask God those trying questions that you feel like, mm, that's pretty blasphemy. No, ask him. It's better to ask him than ask Google. It's better to ask him than not to ask and have that battle with the Lord that could end simply by asking. It's like me and my sister. Like, There's this awkward, like, are you mad at me? You know, I'm like, is she feeling the same way? And I'm like, why don't you just tell me what's up? And that this would be done. We could already move past it. If we're irritated with each other, then that is what it is. So let's discuss it. It didn't used to be that way, and I'm still, I'm afraid to ask, because I'm like, have I done something? Because I didn't mean to. But well-intentioned people, or unintentional people, can do a lot. And not even know that it was perceived that way. So, I'm getting far from where I started. I'm like, maybe that's a good thing. You know, what's up? Consider the job.